Hello, I'm George Ellsworth, owner and president of Bedmaster Inc. Today, we thought we'd just take a minute or two and introduce you to our equipment and also longevity that we're proud to have. We started this company in 1981, and our first machine was built then and is still currently in use. And we are proud of that fact of the longevity of our machines. And so today's service video is to help you maintain your equipment so they can enjoy the same longevity as other machines we have currently in use. Okay, we're hooking the machine up to the tractor. Of course, you can see this is one of the old faithful tractors of the farm that's been with us more than, more than a day or two. But for the purpose of demonstration only, it just hooks up to a standard 540 PTO. Then you have two sets of hoses. The smaller hoses are used for the spout, discharge spout that's on the right hand side of the machine. Or the larger hoses are used to run the flow control valve. And these only need to be running between five to six gallon per minute to facilitate the need of the flow control valve. Today we're gonna to talk about belt maintenance. It's one of those items on the machine that's very critical to maintain. And it's probably one of the things that's not taken care of as it should be. First off, we've removed the shield for the purpose of demonstration only. The shield should not be removed only for the sake of maintenance. On this to maintain the belt, there's two nuts on top of these push bearings you have to break loose in order to adjust the belt. On the bottom side is two nuts you turn in order to push the bottom shaft down more to tighten the belt and maintain proper tension. Also, when you're done, tighten the top nut back as to jam it so it can't come loose and vibrate. To check this to keep alignment in place, just lay a straight edge or a square over the top and show that both of them are parallel to each other. This makes for easy maintenance and a quick way to check the machine out. One thing to remember is that when you're tightening this belt down and you're pushing this shaft down is these two nuts on the bottom, just turn them both equally the same amount in order to maintain the parallel between these two points. In the event that you have lost the belt and need to replace it, the simple way to replace this belt is first of all, you take the beater pump that's on the front here and undo the two bolts that are holding it on and remove it and just lay it up on top of the machine. You don't have to drain the oil or make any changes to that. Then undo the coupler off the end of the shaft, the top fan shaft, and remove the bearing off the front. Then you take the bottom and loosen the bolts on the push bearings undo the lock collars on both bearings and the rear bearing has a third lock collar set collar on the back side that needs to be removed so the shaft can slide forward. In order to get the shaft to slide forward in the pulley it is necessary to loosen the hub and put the bolts in to push the hub out of the pulley to loosen it so the shaft will slide ahead. Then you can get the belt put in and then put it back together. Thank you. It's important for safety that we keep our shields in place. It only takes a second to install. Another common problem we find is not having the flow control set in the proper position. Generally speaking, around 7 o'clock is the approximate area that needs to be set at in order to have proper adjustment to the speed of the floor. Also here on the right side is the bottom is a pressure relief for the pressure it takes to bring the straw forward into the beaters, this one adjusts pressure going back. These are preset at the factory and should be fine for all settings. To increase the speed of the floor, you turn the handle clockwise. To reduce the speed, go counterclockwise. Yeah, this is the floor gearbox that drives the floor chain that runs the push gate that slides the straw into the beaters. On this, You'll notice here's a fill hole to put oil in. 
here's a check level plug for the level the oil is supposed to be. This just uses a simple 85W90 gear loop. It's important to keep the floor chains snug. If they become loose, they'll tend to wrap on the sprockets on the front, causing it to over bypass in the pressure release. In order to set those chains, there's two bolts on each side of the bearing that you need to just loosen one turn, and then to pull the bearing tighter, on the back side is a pull bolt that you can turn in order to pull the chain back. And this will help to maintain proper tension of the floor chains. Next on our list is the beater drive shield. And behind this shield is the drives for the beaters. You can see we have the drive chain along with four idlers that are used in order to keep the, the chains at proper tension. If you need to adjust them, just loosen the nut, slide the sprocket ahead, and that will help give more tension to the chains. If you don't keep the chains snug, what happens is you get excess wear on the teeth of the sprockets and it'll shorten their life. You know, as the sign says, stay clear of machine while in use. The most important thing is in any operation is safety first and stay clear of machine when it's in operation. Just a couple items to still talk about. One is this is the forward and reverse valve, the directional valve for the beaters. This is a control box that you flip on forward and reverse to control the beaters. When in operation, it's used in forward position. One thing to maintain is keep checks on wires to keep them in good condition because if a lack of connection will shut these valve off and it will be non-functional. On this part here, this is the pressure relief for the beaters if they get too much pressure. When it hits 2,500, this pressure relief will relieve the pressure as it is set from the factory at 2,500 PSI. On the back side of the pressure gauge is a sensor and it is set at 1,500 pounds pressure. When the pressure reaches 1,500, it goes down and shuts off your push gate and turns it on and off so it prevents the beaters from getting overloaded. On the oil tank, we have a side glass on the front of it so you're able to tell when it's low of oil so you can put more oil back in to maintain the proper level. On the oil for this is just standard uh, tractor hydraulic oil that is very common from John Deere, Case IH, or any of the major manufacturers is all compatible to the oil used in this machine. Just a quick reminder, on this machine there's 25 grease points. First of all, you have one here, also another one here, one here for the slip, as well as one in the front U-joint. This part here is critical to keep lubricated because under load, if you're turning, it can tend to start pulling and shifting the shaft that's on the bottom pulley of your fan drive. Okay, there's two bearings on the top fan shaft. They're accessible through the holes in the shield, one here as well as here, and also two on the bottom on the take-up bearings, one on the front as well as on the back of the shaft as well. Also, on the bottom drive shaft, there's a bearing behind the sprocket, and there's a zerk in here as well. In this area in the beater drive, there's a zerk on each bearing on each side of the beaters making eight total. Also, there's two on the front shaft of floor drives, one here in this circle, one over there as well. On all of our Bedmaster machines with the new Torflex axle we've installed and used for years, we have grease zerks that are available inside these rubber covers that you remove and a zerk is behind them, and you need to grease all four of these. And last but not least, the last two bearings is on the rear either shaft of the floor drive as there's two bearings here, each have a zerk as well. 